Hey everyone, this is Lori, and we're here to do a floral painting on a 24 by 24 by one and a half inch deep canvas. And we're just starting out here with some medium magenta. I like to use um, Master's Touch Thick Body Acrylic for this. Always get it on sale for half price. That sale usually comes every two or three weeks at Hobby Lobby. So here I'm just kind of basically, obviously this is sped up, but just roughing in where I want the flowers to be. I like it packed with flowers. Um, I always like the light source to be on the left. I don't know why. That's just how I roll. Things could change, but. Um, so I've darkened up the right side of the painting here on the um, on the vase and we're going to try to go a little darker on the right side with the flowers and just kind of blocking in where we want them to go and and obviously with acrylic you can always paint over it so everything can change. So here I'm just adjusting the painting a little bit so I can have access to the bottom, the very bottom of the vase. So I make sure I get every bit of it. You need to just basically, I'm knocking off the high points, trying to let it dry. Now putting out some lemon yellow and getting some white out of the always dried shut jar of Liquitex white. <laughs> Putting that out with a palette knife, which is kind of a pain, but um, putting some purples out. Just use any purples you like. I have um, Liquitex Basics Dioxazine Purple, and I have some Basics uh, Brilliant Purple, which is a little lighter, like a lavender. So put that out, and I also put out um, some Ultramarine Blue. And again, doing filling in the darker areas, the areas that I know that are going to need some depth with the darker colors. And not really worrying about much with this painting is going to be very loose. Um, you're going to be able to tell that they're roses, but... It's a very loose, expressive painting, which allows you to just use, you know, really any colors you like. There are no rules. So these are my favorite colors. Cool colors are my favorite colors. And I think of um, that pink, that magenta, that medium magenta, I, I, I love it too. It's the really only warm color I like. I use other warm colors, but that's it's just my favorite warm color. So there I, I mixed some yellow in um, and it kind of made a peach, but since I was using the brush that had the cool colors on it, it wasn't coming out as vibrant as I wanted. So I put that in the can or the uh, cup of water and I got a clean brush and made some more peach by using the lemon yellow and the, um, the magenta and the white. Now I'm trying to keep it a little darker over on the right side. Just trying to fill in, you just wanna to try to get paint on every area, but keep it, still keeping it blocked out to where you want the flowers and where you need the, the depth to be. So I think I've also um, got the dioxazine purple and then I've also um, got some blue, ultramarine blue in there with white. 
now that's the on that same brush with all those other colors I've I picked up some yellow some um, lemon yellow again and just kind of let it play out on the vase however it wanted to um, to be kind of made a cool looking um, kind of like it's reflective like a, a gold vase reflecting an old gold vase reflecting light looks pretty so now you can never have too much purple so putting some purple in there with some white titanium white and I like to use either filbert or flat brushes usually flat brushes because I just I don't know I just really like them you just want your brush to be firm enough to really be able to push the paint around if you're brush is, is too soft it really doesn't uh, spread the paint around enough for me a lot of times the soft brushes are good for blending now I'm thinking about a, a background color and of course I choose teal <laughs> because cobalt teal is like one of my favorite colors as well so I'm using that with some white and I used to worry about when I paint the uh, the background, I used to paint the background first, paint the whole thing, the background color. And then I thought, well, most of the times you don't get to see the background color. Why am I doing that? And so I thought, well, I would like to paint the background color after I paint the foreground, but it's just you have to be so exact. I thought I had to be so exact around the flowers and the leaves and everything. But now I know that um, I can just play it loose, you know, just do what I want to do. That was the hardest thing for me is to loosen up and to be more expressive. Because I think, you know, especially in my age group, you were taught, you know, be coloring inside the lines is, you know, exactly that, literally that. And uh, the more that it looks real and realistic, the more that it looks like a picture, a photo, rather than a painting, the better it is. And now I feel like the more it looks like a painting, the more I love it. You know, if I wanted it to look like a picture, I would take a picture. So... But it's hard. It's hard. It was hard for me to to think that it was okay to paint that way. So now I'm putting a little background color in between flowers. And also just trying to cover up some of the uh, canvas that's showing just to get the first coat of paint on. With acrylic, you can just paint so many layers and, and give it so much depth so just as long as you let each layer dry completely before you paint on top of it otherwise it'll lift and you don't want that so and a lot of that will get covered up but some of it won't so some of that will show through okay this is where my uh, camera was not recording where I did the leaves and I'm so so sorry but basically it's just the same types of brush strokes only with the greens and the greens that I used um, I have a Liquitex basics I have brilliant yellow green I have cobalt turquoise um, I have hookers green for a, which is really dark and so you can really get some depth with that color and just kind of just squiggle your brush around and then you know kind of squint at it step back take another look decide where it needs some depth where it needs some highlights and go from there just use the greens that you have now I'm adding some yellow some more yellow to the vase And I also, looks like I put some turquoise on the vase. 
because I want it to be shiny, so to look shiny, kind of rustic shiny, so I want it to reflect the, all the colors on the vase. So the turquoise of the room, some colors of the flowers and leaves if you want to, whatever you want to do. So now I'm putting some more of that, those turquoise colors on the, on the darker side and the lighter side, but covering some of those up. So now I get some reflections with some white that's come up on my brush. So I just let that kind of play out. Now, since we have a base for the flowers, now I'm just kind of giving them a little bit more shape um, with some lighter. With So we have the magenta with white and just kind of highlighting a medium highlight. So we'll do even lighter later. So I want that flower to look like it's kind of cupped out to the side. And then up there, I just kind of wanted it to be like loose, like parts of flowers that you could see up in the upper left. And now that's just straight magenta, which I ended up, I don't really enjoy that color that, that came out of that tube. That was a, that magenta is from Master's Choice um, Hobby Lobby. It's more of a red and Actually, red's not my favorite color, but a lot of things that are pink are red in the uh, shadows or down to give it some depth. So if you put that on there, then you can, you know, cover up most of it later. If it's a color that you don't really like or it's not your favorite, you don't have to use that much of it. So it's just some more pink, kind of keeping that for right now, that one, one or two roses there in the middle with some peach, but I think I cover that up later. Trying to keep the shadow again on the right. Um, the brush that I'm using is a filbert here. It appears to be a f the filbert, the 16. It's pretty big. I also use, uh, let me see, I brought them over to me so that I can size two Royal and Lang Nickel, the silver ones. This is an angle brush I use later. I'm also using at one point another Royal and Lang Nickel, um, 743A it says, but it's really, let's see if I can get the paint off of it, it's a size 10, and that's another angle shader. And then, let's see what size this is, size four angle shader. Royal and Lang Nickel. Now those are later when we do some detail. Right now, I have what appears to be flowers going down the left hand side there at the bottom, but I decide later to take those out. I just don't like the way those look. I'm trying to keep that one peach Putting some peach on that. Adding some more of the peach to 
the other flowers. <clears throat> This is such a fun way to paint. It's so freeing. And a lot of times though, you get to a point like this point where it's starting to look kind of crazy. It's like, am I ever gonna be able to bring this together? Is this gonna look like anything that I actually would wanna hang on my wall? And you just have to not give up, which is hard. Sometimes you have to walk away. You know, I walk away from it for a few minutes or a day and come back and be like, oh no, I can see now. Like the first thing you see when you look at it after you've been away from it for a while, you're like, okay, that's the thing I need to do something about. That's the thing I need to lighten up or darken up or use a different color or cover it up completely and start over, <laughs> which I've done that too. Trying to use the straight dioxazine purple to blend in some shadows. I believe I've sped this up to twice as fast, so Yes, twice as fast. So I do paint pretty fast, but just not, not quite this fast. So if you want to slow it down, you can slow it down through YouTube. It has a control for that, but I wouldn't listen to me talking. I would turn that down if I was you because it would be annoying to hear me talk very slowly. <laughs> So now I'm going back into where that purple was and I'm taking some lavender, a lighter tone of it, just adding some titanium white to it to create, not cover up all the dark spots, but soften up all that that I just added. And my dog is looking out the window right next to me and she sees it's a nice sunny day today, which is so nice. And we're so happy about that. Spring is coming. So how fun to paint some flowers. So I wanted, um, I'll go back to the vase. I wanted to make sure at that point that I had my vase pretty much the way I wanted it so that I could then perfect the flowers around it that are that are touching it so if I wanted to have something to overlap the vase any flowers or leaves that would overlap then I wouldn't have to work anymore on the vase right at that spot so that I wouldn't have to worry about it it would be ready for some things overlapping it. So now we're really getting into more highlights. This is a lot of titanium white with a little bit of color added to it. So a little, it looks like a little bit of lavender added to it. 
just wherever you think the light would hit it. So if the light's coming from the left, it's not going to hit the ones on the right nearly as much, but it'll still hit it a little bit. And that's my son and my youngest son and his girlfriend. And Wyatt is taking a look at my painting and giving it the seal of approval. <laughs> I'm right in the kitchen. That's where I paint. You can see my refrigerator right there. My washer and dryer is behind those doors to my left. So once I'm done, I have to put everything away in my pantry back behind over in the corner there behind the painting. I put everything back in there just so I have a place to paint that has non-carpeted floors. <laughs> You do what you got to do, you know. So now I'm just trying to make some more highlights so that they look more like roses. So kind of broken lines around in a semicircle. And everybody does roses a little bit differently. I've seen beautiful roses done with completely straight lines, but I can't seem to paint uh, flowers with straight lines. I have to do arcs. It's just how I roll. I decided I need more blue or it could be lavender. Yes, it looks like lavender. And to me, I like to use, I don't like to just use lighter tones and darker tones of the same two or three colors and then mix those up. I like lots of colors. So you'll see I'll start to add more and more colors to give it more interest to me. This It's what makes me happy when I'm painting is to have lots of different colors even though technically these are just green leaves and pink roses, but we're just using so many different colors that I like. Obviously I haven't used colors that I don't like too much. I did use the magenta, but you notice a lot of that is covered up. And so now I'm just using more of a muted um, version of the, I, I left the blues on my paintbrush and then I got into the greens again so it made more of a muted and there's a little bit of pink on my brush so I just made kind of a muted green which is cool. And I don't like to spend a lot of money on paintbrushes because I like to be able to really scrub them on the canvas if I want to. And so if they were expensive, I might ruin them. So I don't like to worry about that. more highlights to make them look more like roses.
Now up here in the upper left had kind of a glare from my light on it, so it was hard for me to see, so I had to keep going back to it to try to figure out what it needed. So now when I started to finish this one, I wanted to make some like squiggly lines. So to me, they look, I kind of call these like confetti flowers. And then this part might be where I start making it look like little streamers instead of confetti little streamers, which I think is pretty. I'm still working on those flowers that I later cover up. <laughs> They're on the bottom, the lower left. I like to, I don't know, lower left is where I always have the hangy down flowers. So it's a tradition. <laughs> Now I'm adding some bright aqua green, just straight out of the tube, and then that's a Liquitex Basics. And I just love how that really brightens it up. It just gives it something. And I'm just using the corner of that flat brush. Let me see, I have it here. What? It's the... Um, it's a number three, four, it says. It's a master's touch brush with the clear handle. And it's just a flat, flat brush. But I, I mean, you know, you can use a smaller brush for this, but I just used the corner. Gives little flecks of beautiful, like that's a really strong color. So in this painting, I just needed a little here and there. So now I'm using like, I think I just picked up chrome oxide green and we're gonna use that. I just wanna add some more. Okay, I picked up chrome oxide green, but now I'm not using it. So now I'm using um, ocean green. From Master's Touch, which is a very light, really cool green color. I love it. I'm using the one of the little brushes, size two brushes, and I'm just like doing the streamer look on uh, on the flowers. To me, these little streamers that I put on the flowers, it just seems to bring it all together. It just seems to give the finishing touches that it needs. Just hold your brush loosely and just kind of let it squiggle. And make sure you have plenty of paint on your brush. So while I'm squiggling, uh, just remind you if you if you like this, um, I'm going to be uploading more. I'm going to aim for once a week, maybe once every other week. Um, so please subscribe to my channel, 
and um, and we will bring you more content. So this painting, uh, this was the first, well, this is the second day I painted it. I painted the, the rough in on one day, and then I painted the rest of it the following day. And then as the night wore on, I kind of decided things. As I walked away from it and came back, I decided I didn't want those flowers. Down in the lower left, I just wanted some leaves, so I fixed that. Um, I needed another flower right above where those are. It just looks like kind of um, purple and pinks just kind of all over the place there. So I decided that a, a rose needed to be there. And it's just one of the things where, even to the point where I had gone to bed and I was thinking about, you know, something and I came back and into the kitchen and painted it some more. So sometimes that's what you need to do and if you're me for you to decide that it's it's really finished. Especially with abstract art it's be better to walk away and stand away from it and see what bothers you about it or you know whatever you really like about it maybe you need to repeat that where there's a spot that doesn't look right to you or there's a hole where you need something And I think that I didn't see that I needed a rose there in that lower left because I was sitting up too close to it. So it was not until I moved away that I could see that it, it needed to be changed. I'm trying to put stuff in there. I really decided it needed a rose. See how those little streamers just really kind of brought it all together? And now I'm kind of bringing the top to me to get the glare off of it so I can see what's going on up that upper left. So we're getting to the end of it, pretty much. Deciding on more and more strength. And now you can see where I added the rose. This is later, this is the next day. I added the rose and took away the flowers that were dangling down on the left. And you can see how vibrant the colors are here in this this part of the video where I get up close. And I always have my signature with a paint pen. It's just easier for me. See where I covered those up? Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.